All right, it looks like we are live. Um, I don't want to go ahead and start until you guys can actually um, say that you see me. <laughs> uh, before we go ahead and start, I, I've done it before where we've started talking and nobody can see anything. So. Um, Yeah. Sorry, I can't talk and type. I'm terrible at it, but I'm trying to say hi. <laughs> um, let me know if you can see me. Yeah, I can type and talk what I'm typing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Someone says, ooh, okay, something's happening. <laughs> That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that message clearly didn't go through. I can see and hear you just fine. Yay, we have a we have a red a green light, red light, green light. Green light is good. <laughs> uh, I love your hair, Kara, by the way. Thank you. I can never figure out what to do with it. Sometimes it feels good back, sometimes it annoys me. <laughs> it's so heavy though. It's it's really, really long and heavy. And it gets caught underneath me or my husband when I'm sleeping at night. So I go to turn and my hair gets pulled. Just imagine getting woken up routinely by somebody pulling on your hair. Yeah, that would be miserable. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to welcome everybody today to Cake Foo. I'm glad that you guys could all join us. And um, I, I'm not going to say I hope you guys get something out of this because I know you are because it's Kara. You know? So there you go. Um, before we get started, I want to do kind of an introduction of Kara and talk about um, some really cool things she's got coming up and, and also um, uh, tell you guys about the giveaway and promotion that we're going to be doing today. So, yay, I hope you guys are super excited about being here today. Uh, all right, so, Kara, let's talk about you, and uh, we all like to talk about ourselves, right? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> all right, so how did you get started into cake decorating? I know that you've had some amazing experiences, like working with Ron Ben Israel and, the, you know, TV appearances, magazine appearances, so... How about you just go ahead and tell us how you got started and the wonderful achievements you've had. And well, um, really I got started in 1998 when I went to art school, just out of high school. Um, I studied the fine arts to teach K through 12. Um, and obviously if you see where I am now, you see where art and teaching has kind of come into play um, finally in life. But in between those times, <clears throat> I had to take a medical leave of absence in 2001 from school. I was just short of my, shy of my student teaching. So for the next few years, life kicked in and I never got back to school. I had bills to pay, you know, grown up things to do. So I was in the food service industry and I always loved food. Um, but I started watching Ace of Cakes and I was just, I was intrigued by what he did with cake because he was kind of the first one to put those really cool cakes on the map. Um, but I don't watch things just for entertainment. I pick things apart um, and not critical. So, okay, sometimes I'm critical. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm trying to figure out what people are doing and how. And so I started doing that with him. And by this time, my husband and I were together and we had a little boy. And I wanted to make some really cool cakes for him. And I figured, I can do this. So I gave it a shot. Um, and I didn't really think much of it other than, hey, I made some cool cakes, which now I look at and I cringe. But some people had said to me, you know, why don't you, why don't you open up a bakery? And me being the typical, you know, nerdy, got to know, got to study type, I said, I don't have the foundational knowledge. I don't have the food knowledge, the baking knowledge, or the business knowledge. And they were like, well, why don't you go back to school? I was like, oh, hey, there's an idea. <laughs> so I, <laughs> and I went to the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York. I packed up my husband and two boys by that time. Uh, and we moved across state. And I attended school there. I did the AOS portion, which is the actual physical kitchen learning about baking portion. And then I stayed and I did a bachelor's in business management. Um, so I, you know, I, I got those things under my belt that I really felt like I needed and really did need. 
Um, during my time there, I had a required internship. Internship is actually a class right in the middle of your schooling. If you don't pass it, you can't finish your schooling. I did my internship for 18 weeks with Ron Ben Israel in New York City. Um, it was a completely formative experience, and if you have the opportunity to do an internship, even if it's you know on weekends somewhere, do it. Seeing how other people do things and seeing it from behind the scenes is so worth it. Um, and after that, I actually did not go into cake right after I graduated college, well, the Culinary Institute. I became a dining services director for a residence hospice in downstate New York. We had 10 beds where I would work 12 hour shifts and these hospice patients, and if you don't know what hospice is, I'm gonna get a little sad for a minute. Um, hospice is end of life care. These are people who are terminal and pretty much days away from you know passing on. So what I did was I literally cooked to order anything they wanted, like they were at home. So um, that was also, it was actually a really good break and it really helped me appreciate food and what food means to people in both celebrations and comfort. And that was so valuable to understanding cake and why it's so important and why people indulge in cake for celebrations and why it's incumbent upon us to really give them something great. Um, so after I had my third son, which was just months after I graduated uh, college, and um, we, we lost our home through a series of unfortunate events, like lemony snickets. And we moved back to Buffalo with two weeks notice. Um, literally two weeks after I had my son, we had to move back to Buffalo. And I decided to focus on doing really great cakes, my style, and eventually into teaching them. And I've been featured in magazines and now Craftsy, Cake Made, Sugar Ed, and on Food Network. Um, so yeah, so that's where I am now. And I'm here with you. This is my second time on Cake Foo which I really get a kick out of. This is a lot of fun. This is my happy dance. I only do this when I'm really squirmy and happy about something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's me in a, in, a, in a nutshell. Awesome. Well, I think that, you know, I think that the setbacks that we have in life are, are definitely for a reason. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, and of, of course, all of the wonderful things that have happened to you in your life, you know, I think mm -hmm. they, they all go together and make us who we are. They so, absolutely do. I agree. Some very similar situations. So, yeah. yes. Um, okay, so we are going to talk about the giveaway before we get into our demo here, which is wonderful. Okay, yes. so uh, Kara has a brand new Craftsy class, and I'm going to show you guys a picture of this class because it's awesome. Um, I'm going to pull it up here. Where did that go? Sorry, <laughs> I will. I will get it found. Hang on. I had it all ready to go, and then they closed or something. Okay. Here we go. And it will take a second, but I've got it. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, industry secrets for the savvy decorator. I love the title of this class. I have not had a chance to watch it yet. I, I've gotten it, but I haven't watched it yet. So that's going to be on my to-do list today while I um, work on a cake. Can and I tell you a little bit about that title real quick, a little story? Because you said really? love the title. I, I, I was really, I was lobbying, my producer and I were lobbying for a completely different title. And I hated this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very clear. I'm like, no, Craftsy saw, really saw the, the tantrum-y side of Kara. I'm really not tantrum-y, but um, I hate it. Like, I love industry secrets, but savvy decorator, the word savvy just at first kind of made me feel like, like my grandma and bubblegum pink and the smell of body powder and lace doilies everywhere. <laughs> I know, right? I am totally visual with everything I hear and, and like interpret intellectually. <laughs> and so I was like, no, I don't want this. And they were like, sorry, Kara, we got to do this, you know. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, I'll let it go. <laughs> well, I love it. I, I, I think it's retro sounding, but I think retro is cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I quelled myself with saying, you know what? 
at least the word savvy has two V's in it. And that's pretty cool because how many other words on earth have two V's in it? So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll latch myself onto that and I'll, I'll say, okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So that class right there, a uh, brand new Craftsy class is uh, going to be what we are giving away today. And we are also offering a discount. Uh, which I will put up in the code down here at the bottom, and I will put um, in the chat box also. So um, I guess the chat box is no, I don't know where it is. It's <laughs> on the <laughs> it's on the right side of your screen, uh, whichever direction that is from here, whether it be there or there. I, I it gets turned around. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, so watch for that discount and then um we are going to go ahead and, and and again make sure you stay for the end we are going to be doing that giveaway and today for the giveaway we are going to be um basing our uh our choice off of participation so uh you guys got to be with me if you want the class right Start right questions and leave cool comments and not like, hey, Kara's cool, but you know, like <laughs> suggestions and tips and because that's what we're doing today, we're sharing, so. Exactly. I, that's what these hangouts are all about. That's what these trainings are for. Um, that's why we do live. I mean, it would be so much easier just to make a video and post it. <laughs> this is actually really hard to do. I've actually seen a few people attempt to do these on a regular basis and it doesn't work because it's hard, it's hard. So, um, so definitely uh, start making comments um, and participate and and uh, by Kara's request, that's how we're going to pick our winner today. So I'll be watching. If you guys cannot access the, um, the chat box, which I know that it is an issue for some, uh, go ahead and comment down at the bottom. Or if you're on YouTube watching us live on YouTube, you can comment there. And I will watch all three places. So, um, so just there, there is a way for you to comment, so make sure you do. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let Kara go ahead and uh, you go ahead and start with your demonstration. I think it's an amazing demonstration, perfect timing, great for fall, um, mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't be more excited about it. You guys can probably see my cake, oh, there you go, behind me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've seen the picture that's gone up recently um, that I shared. It has all my little fall leaves on them and a couple little pumpkins. I think Amelia has an image um, as well. But my leaves came out really real, and I did a lot of practicing with it. And um, I want to show you guys how I did those. <clears throat> okay, here they are. Right here. There they are. Yep. So I didn't actually go outside and collect leaves. No, those aren't real leaves on my, <laughs> on my cake. I uh, did a little bit of searching online to find out what leaves, what species of trees are completely indigenous to New York State, and there's over 50,000. So I just picked the leaves that I knew best, um, and not all of them are represented there. But I started with my premium wafer paper from Icing Images. I believe Icing Images owner Debbie um, is in here somewhere. I, I can't see the chat. So Debbie, if you're there, say hi to everyone. Give a wave. Um, <laughs> Debbie um, has really great products and you know I start with wafer paper premium wafer paper both white and the pre-saturated and this wafer paper is better than your grade zero trust me I, I've, I've done this enough um, it tastes really good and it, it has vanilla in it and um, it tastes so much better than regular wafer I do that just to prove to you that I'm not completely disgusted by it <laughs> um, something about that vanilla being added to the recipe, it actually changes the mouthfeel if you've, if you've um, eaten regular wafer. Um, Here's an image of the, the wafer paper. Yep. Um, it is, I, okay, so I use this wafer paper. <laughs> I think it is amazing stuff because, I mean, in Utah, we have a really dry climate and it's, it's really hard to get wafer paper to work properly because it cracks and, and is a mess. Um, although Avalon has a solution for that, which I have used and 
and shared. I didn't think it's wonderful. Um, but this way for paper, I really don't have much of a problem with it. Um, even in the dry climates, uh, you can fold it and it'll fold nicely and it won't crack and, and be terrible like a lot of other wafer paper is. And, and again, you can eat it and it tastes good. So it tastes like a um, ice cream cone. Did you say that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the wafer, the wafer cones, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're awesome. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to turn you guys down to my work surface so I can show you things there. Got a little bit of a boob shot there. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so I pre-cut all of these leaves, um, and I store them in airtight Ziploc bags. Clearly, I have a ton more that I haven't done yet, but they keep really well once you put them in Ziploc. Um, but I pre-cut all of these with my Cameo Silhouette cutter. Um, a lot of people, I, I'm, I'm not trying to sound advertise but people like to know exactly what you use. No, I haven't used a Cricut. I don't know about Cricut. I don't know how to use this in coordination with Cricut. Please don't ask me about Cricut. Um, so I use Cameo Silhouette, which I absolutely love. Yes, I could cut these by hand with templates, but I'm such a perfectionist and such a fusser. It would take me forever. So I can, what I could cut in about 45 minutes by hand takes about three minutes on my Cameo. Uh, so if you do a lot of wafer, no matter what it is you do, it's really, it, it's such a time and sanity saver and it saves your hands too. So my favorite leaf out of all the ones I did were these little guys. <clears throat> and I started these with two colors. But I use the same gel colors over both, which is really nice, because if you use the same base and just different gel colors, you're not having to switch over or keep track of things. You know, what colors you have to use for which or things like that, which is really kind of awesome. So what I'm going to start with for these is a little bit of, oops, ivory gel color. Oops, that was gold, I'm sorry. So gold, this one's ivory. That one's not really jelly anymore. It's a little bit more watery, but no big deal. And a little bit of egg yellow. Um, and so that I can keep these, keep track of which one each of these is, I set my bottles in the same order. That looks next my, yeah, next to my things because I forget. <laughs> I forget very easily. So I'm going to start with my, with my yellow one, and I'm going to go in first. I'm going to bend this over a little bit. Oops, bend this over a little bit. I'm going to go in first with my with my egg yellow. And I may ask, well, why yellow over yellow? Because, look, it's bright orange when it's concentrated. So I'm getting some nice warmth on here. So I'm going to dab much of this off so that it's not gloopy. And I'm going to go in just around the edges. I want it deeper in the edges than I want it in the center. Is that centered for you guys? Here. And I want it to kind of vary going towards the center. So if you pounce in this motion, starting at the outside and getting lighter going in, you'll get a better variation or gradation, I should say. And it's actually so much easier to work with less on your sponge because then you don't get little, like you can see a little bit of a line right here. I don't know if you can see it from there, but you can see a little bit of a defined line just because it was so fresh and wasn't really worked into my sponge very well. Whoops, so there we go. So we have that started. Now you'll notice it's starting to curve. And if you've listened to me talk about wafer before, whatever side of the wafer you apply moisture to, it's going to expand initially. So it's going to curve outward on this side right now, but as it dries, it is going to curl back inwards because as it dries, it contracts and pulls back into itself. I'm working on the, um, on the flat side right now, not on the textured side just because I'm going to be going in and making some veins and I don't want the textured side to interrupt those. I do like to go in just a little bit on the back and add some, some color. I don't go crazy on the backs because when I present these, I present them facing forward on my cakes. But for the time being, it'll give me a, a, flatter, um, a flatter leaf. So now I'm gonna go in with my, a little bit of gold. I just folded this over to the other side, use a different sponge if you like. Oh, I didn't show you guys. I'm sorry. I'm talking so much, Amelia. People have questions. Just interrupt me. Oh, you're um, sorry. We do have a couple, but we'll get to them. Okay. These are cosmetic sponges just from the makeup aisle at the, at the um, I think I got them at Target. 
But anywhere, anywhere you have a makeup aisle, you'll find those cosmetic sponges. They're the ones we use for foundation, ladies. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my gold and do kind of the same thing and deepen it. Oh, I don't have enough on there. And deepen this just a little bit. I don't want it to be so bright. But again, I'm focusing more towards the edges. And it does get sticky because this is the gel color, and gel colors just tend to be thick, thicker and stickier. And when I get to the little stem, I just darken it a little bit more. Chances are that stem isn't going to last. I tended to just pull most of those off when I was creating my bunches. But just in case you have, you know, the need for a stem, just darken it. So now we have our nice varied color going inwards, but I really want to accent those edges and give them some life. I'm going to grab a new sponge because I'm making a mess of myself. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna use this, this butt end of my sponge, the flat end of the wedge, and I'm going to pretty much load this with my ivory. I love ivory for so many different reasons. And for, I want more than that, I'm greedy. Um, and for so many different things. If you have a really, really bright color that just feels like too brilliant, even in fondant, a little bit of ivory tones it down without, I mean, because some people would wanna use black to bring it down a little bit, don't do that. Try ivory first. It's so gentle and it's so useful. Okay, so I have this loaded up. I'm literally going to be going in at a 90 degree angle. Can you guys see that that way? I'm literally going in and I don't have enough still. Clearly you really have to load this up. <laughs> but also using some, some may say, well, aren't you gonna end up melting your edges? Even if they do melt just a little bit, oh well, because they're going to look like worn leaves, which is pretty cool. And use it at different angles. Use your edge so that you get some more variation kind of going inwards on your leaf and go all the way around, pouncing. You can use brown for this. I tend to not like brown gel color. Um, I mean, maybe there's a deeper one that I just haven't explored yet, but it feels, it gets too pinky on me. So I tend to lean towards a really concentrated ivory to do what I like to do. So there's our leaf and we've got some nice wilty edges. It's starting to look a little aged, like it's hung out in nature for a while. And now to do my veining on there, I am going to use... It's um, edible food pen from Rainbow Dust. And this one's red. Why red? I don't know. It's what I had and I really liked the way it looked. I literally just freehand this. Just a single line. I use the thicker side. There are two sides to these, a thicker side and a finer point. And then I just go in and make Angled marks. Now, if you see I'm kind of flicking this towards the end, I don't want straight geometric, almost ruler-looking lines. I want those veins to taper out towards the end like they would in a natural leaf. So I want them thicker towards the center vein and then thinner going outwards. They just end up looking more natural that way. Oh, I'm giving you guys the finger. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're totally fine. I told you there would be shenanigans. <laughs> Flip you off. And so there you go. <clears throat> now as this dries, as this dries, these edges are going to curl more and it'll start to come in because the majority of my color was applied to this side, not this one. The reason I applied it to this side is in case somebody catches a glimpse of the back, you know, it's got some more color to it, but also to try and keep this a little flatter while I'm working on it. So as this dries, it'll start to cup inwards. You can see with this leaf, this is how I did that with this leaf. You can see it's got it's got a lot of curve coming inward, which just really gives it that nice, that really nice feel. Now, if I were to do this color to my green one, it would get really dark and warm and golden and deep brown, which is also the way you would find these leaves in nature. But now you've used 
the same colors, the same process, really kind of without thinking much, and come up with two distinctly different leaves for your decor. So we're all about doing things easier and smarter. Awesome. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So that's how I made those leaves, literally all of them. I followed that same exact process, oops, <clears throat> just different colors and different shapes. And I did some orange ones, as you can see behind me, um, some more yellow ones. And I worked with a stylized one. I wanted to do white and do some like pure white pumpkins with just some warm accents. So I'm working with just some really stylized white ones. Obviously, they're not natural, but who says you can't do it? That's right. I said you don't have to do it. So there. <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna ask a few questions right here really fast. But before we do that, um, I wanted to share with you guys the links. Um, and I forgot to mention the discount for the wafer paper. Duh. <laughs> so we have all kinds of discounts and links and all kinds of stuff today because you know care is amazing and full strings. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, here is the link to the craftsy class. Um, it is, you know, I'm going to get rid of that HTTP part. I just want to mention, because I know somebody's going to say it in the comments, yes, there is an all-access pass for Craftsy right now. One price, access to every class. However, if there's a class you particularly want to keep, you won't be able to with that link. So if you're really only using that $9 link to go to my class, you'll lose my class after that, and you'll have paid that $9 for the all-access pass. And then my my link that Amelia has up right now is the cheapest link you'll find. It's the 50% off link, and I'm the only one who's got it. So yeah. you end up paying that nine plus the nineteen ninety nine. So we are we are never able to offer that 50% off. Um, we <laughs> usually get like a 25, maybe 35%. So this is big. This is big. So you want to definitely take advantage of this 50% off and. Uh, yeah, thank you, Kara, for, for um, mentioning that. Okay, no so fakefood.com forward slash Kara dash Craftsy. Um, and that's how you will get access to her amazing Craftsy class that uh, I can't wait to watch. <laughs> and, uh, like, seriously, I'm making a cake today, and I am going to be watching it as I work. It's awesome. Awesome. Yay. We'll bake together, Amelia. That's right. <laughs> Love it. That's the best way to watch Craftsy classes, right? Yep. <laughs> All right, so there is the link for the Craftsy class, cakefood.com forward slash Kara dash Craftsy. Um, and I did put that up in the chat box for you guys. And um, <clears throat> so you can just click on that one. You can't click on this one. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, and then here's the wafer paper discount. Um, Icing Images is amazing, as you know, I, I use a lot of their products. They have the Cameo thing too, right? Yep, that's where I got my Cameo, yep. And it comes in a little pack, so you don't just get your cutter, you also get some wafer paper to start, a how-to packet, um, and access to this online community where you can, you know, kind of get started, and you have access to some starting templates, which is really cool too, so. So here's a link for that, it's uh, Icing Images, um, dot com uh, forward slash wafer paper uh, wafer dash paper make sure you get the dash in there so um, that will get you a 10% discount on on any amount of wafer paper you want to use or purchase so um, it's not transferable with other products on the website but any any wafer paper you can <clears throat> get so that's really awesome so another thing I love about um, icing images wafer paper is their um, Oh, I, I, I always forget what it's called. Um, where you can have the images printed onto the wafer paper. Oh, the edible ink and the edible. Um, oh, they have a service, don't they? Yeah, it's the it's a service. Debbie, okay. are you out there? If you're out there, can you? Oh, Mitch is out there. Make us sound a little more intelligent. About it. Because my brain is is lost it. <laughs> but that's great stuff too. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, there's a discount for the um, wafer paper. Um, and I'll put that up on the chat. And we'll put these back up at the end again for anybody that uh, decides you want to go and use those. Um, so yeah. Um, 
now for the the questions that we have we've got a bunch of them so um i <clears throat> i let me pull these up um, i i print is that what it's called um let's see okay let's go through and find some questions here um someone wants to know uh the the sponge that you you are using is that a makeup brush it's a makeup sponge yes it's this sponge yeah yep okay um and then someone said can you say where you get your wafer paper from again please um i, 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 I get it from icing images um the link right there um and that's where I get my premium wafer paper from. There is a difference between the premium and the zero grade. Um, and it's not just price, truly. Um, it really is a matter of workability and quality of the paper, so. Okay, oh, Mitch just informed me. That link will get you to the wafer paper, <laughs> but you kinda need the code. Okay, here. <laughs> uh, okay, is it? Okay, hey Mitch, you're going to have to help me. Is it Kara 10% off or just Kara 10%? Or, or just Kara? That was not clear enough. I will get you guys the code in just a minute. <laughs> uh, okay, so, but Mitch is watching and she'll get us that information. Um, let's see. And then um, the templates that you use for your leaves. Can you explain those again? Someone was asking for a template. Um, honestly, what I did, um, and you can't sell them if you want to do this, but this is what I did. I grabbed some sketched images of, um, leaves off Google and I just imported them into the Cameo Silhouette software and it automatically creates, um, an, an outline of it. And then you throw away the, the image and you have this outline remaining and then you tell it, yes, this is what I want to cut and it'll cut it out for you. And it can cut really, really, really small details, um, and it can cut a lot out of each out of each sheet, um, which is really cool. Very little waste. I mean, you can see, you can see how, you know, delicate those little points are, and they all come out perfect, no tearing. Imagine trying to do that by hand. Ugh. <sighs> yeah. I I know. <laughs> I, I've been there. <laughs> I, I've done a lot of cutting. You know, one thing that um, Icing Images has also is their... Um, I am terrible with names of products. Um, it's their little rolling thing. Oh, what's it called? What's it called? Mitch, help me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a little rolling... Um, thing that icing images has and it has little cutters also um that i actually use for wafer paper it wasn't uh, meant for wafer paper it was meant for their um icing sheets but i use it for wafer paper all the time and i love it awesome. um, a cameo would be so much easier i need to get me one of those yeah. um, okay so a lot of comments in our comment section people who can't awesome. access the uh, guys um, i'm sorry i can't see them but anyone out there from all things cake Hi, thank you for joining me. Yay. Oh, and by the way, the, the um, code for, oh, Sweet Accents, that's what it's called. It's a little rolling thing. I've done a couple of cake food trainings with, with the Sweet Accents, so I should know what it's called. I'm, yeah, my, my words get lost sometimes. I don't know if anybody else is like that. But yeah, it's called the Sweet Accents. It's awesome, um, that I used to cut my wafer paper with. Um, okay, so, there are, someone is asking about the actual wafer paper. They said, is it like rice paper? No, uh, rice paper is, is different. Um, wafer paper is made of potato starch and vegetable oil. Um, when people say rice paper, especially if you've seen people using uh, rice paper for like decor, like Nadia at Chocolate, who does those beautiful draped um, girls with fabric looking stuff. That's rice paper and it's different. Um, they're more like spring roll wrapper type things. Um, a lot of people still call wafer paper, you know, rice paper. It's not really what it is. And they might also be getting confused with actual artists rice paper, which is made out of rice. It's a beautiful medium to, uh, to draw, especially with ink on. 
Um, and it does feel kind of similar to edible wafer, but they're not the same. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, and I, I have had people ask me before about the rice paper, and I'm not familiar with what the, the actual rice paper is, so I'm glad that you were able to clarify that. Um, I, I was able to say, no, that's not it, <laughs> but not like, why? So that's, that's great. Okay. For those of you that are not able to see the chat box, for some reason, um, sometimes it just doesn't work for some people. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to, down in the, the, the comment section below the video, I am in the process of posting that, um, the links down there so that you guys can access those as well. Um, if, if you're watching and you want to access those and you can't see them, go ahead and refresh your screen and that will bring up the, um, the comments. But give me a minute because I'm still working on it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Someone so asks, do you have any suggestions for doing these leaves wired for using in a bouquet? Uh, you can do these wired. And if you want to do them wired, what I would suggest, you get two like leaves, um, is that you double them up and you put a little wire in the center and you use a little bit of water before you color them and put them together. Um, I actually show the technique on my Craftsy class with some really pretty loop leaves. Um, but you would have to, you'd have to double them up. Could you do it the other way? Yeah, but then you have the wire exposed. Um, and you know what? Leaves in the fall, they tend to be a little thicker and more leathery anyways. So I really don't think that, you know, doubling them up would be a negative. So. Awesome. Okay. And... When I made that comment, I lost the chat, but I do have the other comments here, so we'll ask from those <laughs> for a minute. Um, oh my gosh, someone says, been waiting for this class with you today. I just booked another fall wedding and the bride wants to leave, so this is so timely. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, I, that's, I, I love things hearing things like that because it just shows that you guys really um, are appreciating what we do here. So it's great. You know what's nice about the wafer as opposed to gum paste? It's already dry. I mean, it's it's ready to go. And this took me almost no time. And, you know, there's no weight. This is There's no weight here. So you don't have to worry about putting a ton of these into your cake and having it tear or weigh down. You just... You got paper, so. Yeah. Okay, well, a lot of questions about your colors that you okay. use. Um, airbrush colors or gel colors? It depends on what I'm doing. Um, for this, I prefer gel colors because they're a little thicker and they're going to be a little richer. Airbrush colors are thinner, which is good for some things, but um, I find that for this, they tend, they don't go as far when I'm pouncing around. I use less gel color than I would airbrush. And because there's it, it's so much thinner, if you do make it thicker on your sponge, you're gonna really melt your wafer. Um, can you use it? Sure. Uh, for this technique, I don't like it. I, I, I tried it at length because I really am an airbrush color fan, but for this technique, I wouldn't. I would just use your gel colors. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, and then, um, Someone asked if you've ever used uh, Dinky Doodle airbrush colors. I haven't used Dinky Doodle, and I do get asked that a number of times. Um, I haven't. I prefer um, I prefer two. I prefer uh, Ellen Tetralt's new line over at Global Sugar Art. Not, not the Global Sugar Art brand, but Ellen Tetralt's color lines for everything. Every one of his brand colors for everything. Dust, gel color, airbrush. Seriously good premium stuff. Um, but I also love Americolor. I just, I can't pull myself away from Americolor. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, so. <laughs> well, Americolor seems to be easy to access. You know, it is. a lot of crafting stores and things like that. So, yeah. I don't think Wilton does airbrush colors, do they? I was just trying to rack my brain for that too. No, but I, I don't think they do, but they seem to be coming out with a little bit more serious of a line uh-huh, I agree, I agree. So they may, that may be something to keep our eyes out for. 
I know they didn't in the past, but it doesn't mean they haven't yet. I should go maybe check that out. Keep yeah. in the know. <laughs> but yeah, Wilton has been stepping it up a little bit. So yeah, which is nice. Yes, especially since they're so accessible everywhere. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so um, someone asked, uh, can you dilute the airbrush or the the colors with um, alcohol or would that make it too wet? You know, the, here's the thing with alcohol. First of all, no, I wouldn't. Um, second of all, the reason I wouldn't is because alcohol, when it evaporates, it takes the moisture out of your wafer and it doesn't matter if you're using premium, you're stripping excess moisture, extra moisture from it that you don't want to pull away because whereas this is ready to go and I can do this with it, I can do this and it's not, I mean, I can make it do the wave. Um, if I were to have used alcohol on this and I went like this, it would snap. It's it too brown. Uh, so no, can you use alcohol? Sure. Would I? No. Yeah, that's definitely, I, I actually learned that the hard way at one point. I did something, oh no, you know what it was? It was, um, what was it that I used? It was an edible lacquer spray. Don't do it. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. just made the whole thing just crisp mm -hmm. as a chip. It was just, yeah, don't do it. <laughs> I, think, I think a big reason is because that edible lacquer has a lot of alcohol content in it. And so... Yeah, don't do that. You know, if you do need to dilute it for any reason, um, I use a technique in my cake made class uh, that I didn't cover in my craftsy class because it's no longer a, a technique I like to use. Um, I just I have other preferred techniques. Um, I used spray coconut oil, extra virgin spray coconut oil for like your pans and stuff and baking pans. Um, if you wanted to do it, I would use something oil based. Um, like that if you had to dilute it for some reason, but I really don't find I really don't think there's a reason to to dilute it Unless you have ideas that you might need to dilute it in which case share them I'm <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, so I, um, I typically when I need it uh, watered down I just use airbrush colors. Mm -hmm. I and that's you know, that's what I use um, but yeah I actually have somebody that has a tip for you, which is awesome. kind of cool, because those are always nice. We love tips. Yeah. But she says, if you use a binder clip to hold the makeup sponge, it makes it easier to hold. You are right. However, um, and I have done that. Um, however, I find that I want to pinch and pull and mold it to my things too much. Um, and so when I do that, it's just, it's too permanent for me. I like to have, this is the artist in me. Um, cake, you know, doing it neatly is definitely a cake decorator thing. And I still haven't picked up on that. <laughs> I've still got a fine artist in me where I'm perfectly happy to have paint all over my face and everywhere around me. Um, I just, I like to be really, really in touch with, with whatever tool I'm using. Um, so... But yes, that is a really good technique and I've seen that used a lot. If you're doing just straight color over something and you just need it all one color, absolutely, save your fingers. Yeah, <laughs> love it, I love it. Okay, so um, someone's asking, is there a way to add shine to the leaves? To add shine to these? Um, not really, but if you look at the image that Amelia has of my leaves, um, I mean, the wafer paper on this side let me get it. I mean, oops, sorry, wrong way. I mean, they are. Here's the image again. Yeah, well, you can see on the one leaf that that's not the better angle. Um, but <laughs> I'm not I'm not criticizing Amelia. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll go the other one. No worries. <laughs> um, you, you can see reflection on these. They do look leathery and kind of shiny. If you're talking about like a glass-like reflection, you can see that the a couple of the red ones towards the center and center top. Um, if you're talking about like a glass-like finish, um, I don't have anything in particular that I've tried or used. I mean, we use confectioner's glaze for things like this, but I don't know about the um, the water or alcohol content in that and how it would behave with the leaves. I've never tried it. It's an interesting thought, though, and now I kind of want to get my confectioner's glaze out. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine that the confectioner's glaze would work, I would imagine. Um, I, I would think not so. Not out of the spray, 
the lacquer spray. Don't do that. I've already said that. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I, I would be inclined to say yes, it would work because it, you know, preserves isomalt and doesn't melt it or turn it gooey. Um, but then again, I don't know if it makes it more brittle and if it'll provide rigidity for the leaves enough to compensate for whatever liquid or alcohol that's in it. I'm very sciencey about how I think through things, so. <laughs> but it would be an interesting experiment to try. Awesome. Okay, we actually had someone just say that Wilton does have airbrush colors now. Look at that. So they're moving up in the world. <laughs> they really are, right? Uh, they're they're starting to realize that you know we use a lot of other things. Yeah, yeah. So, awesome. Um, someone is asking, do you find that the wafer paper gets gummy as you color it? How do you keep it from getting streaky when the wafer paper gets wet? Okay, so do I find that it gets gummy? It depends on how much you're applying. But when you leave your gel colors really thick and concentrated and don't and don't dilute them, it doesn't get gummy. It takes a whole lot on there to make them gummy. Uh, my ivory, for some reason, kind of liquefied after having it for two months. Why? I don't know. Um, so that makes it slightly gummy around the edges, but not terribly. When you apply it with the sponge, it's not much of an issue. What was the second part of the question? I didn't catch it. Um, she said, how do you keep it from getting streaky when the wafer paper gets wet? Streaky. Um, well, some... Hang on, I think I have a piece here. Some wafer, and this happens so much more in zero grade than it does in premium. Um, some wafer paper will have some, you can see it like up around here, sorry, right here. Um, there's a little bit of variance and it does become more um, noticeable once you've applied color or any kind of moisture to it. Um, this is actually a, a, a huge irregularity in, in the premium. This, this never happens, to be honest. It's just a matter of the processing. Um, but when you're applying things, if you're talking about streaks or areas where your color overlaps, almost like when you're coloring with markers as a kid and trying to cover a big, you know, area and you can't you can't get them to you know come together without without a streak. That's really a matter of applying too heavily all at once. And the less you use and the more layers you put on, the better. You'll avoid that. I mean, you can see I don't have. I don't have streaks in this. So, you know, that's, I mean, if I were to go over the back of this where I just kind of pounced a little bit, you would get streaks around all the outside of all those little, um, all those little blobs of color. But if you do it smoothly and with very little, you're not gonna get that. You're gonna get a nice gentle application that's even. Awesome. I'm writing a message to somebody that just said they can't um, see the video. Um, if, if, well, I, it's pointless to even say this because if you're watching the video, you're seeing the video and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm going to comment in the comment section here in just a second to answer that. Um, someone says, um, is there a way to get a stronger vein in the leaves, more of a textured vein? Good question. Um, you can use a texture mat. Um, they do have leaf veiner mats. Um, you do have to make your leaf wet and press it. I don't like doing that. And um, I've seen some techniques and some people who have said, you know, just dip it quick in the water, put it on your mat, five minutes it's dry. That's a bunch of BS, guys. It's way longer than five minutes. <laughs> to an hour. And do you have enough veiners to do an entire job lot at once? Chances are no. And if you do, man, you've got a lot of money and you don't need to be making cakes. <laughs> but no, that's, that's truly, that's a fallacy. I, I have experimented with wafer in every way possible. And to do that realistically on a larger scale, it doesn't work. Um, can you go in with, you know, a sharp edged tool and impress from the backside? Sure. That's a whole lot of work. Um, if you're doing stunning individual leaves, like you just need like one or two leaves and you're doing acorns, then yeah, then go for it. Do the longer method and really make it pop. But for something with as much as that, 
not me. <laughs> That's why I, I, you know, used my my color pen, my food color pen, to go in and add those those little touches. So. Okay. so, can I share an example really fast? I know this is yeah. Okay, so I did a cake um, at one point, and I did that technique of um, dipping it in the water and setting it on a mold. I actually made my own molds. I bought a bunch of the um, putty stuff and made my own molds. Mm -hmm. um, and but I had to make like three dozen in order to get what I needed. And I'm going to share with you guys. <laughs> you are gonna freak out, Karen. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. This is the cake that I did, and all of those leaves were used with that technique. I remember this, this cake. This was long before I knew other techniques. Um, I would totally do it different today, I think. Um, but I loved how it turned out. It looks amazing. But yes, it takes forever. It takes absolutely forever. Um, and um, someone was asking how to get them to stick to, to wires. Um, this is not the best way to do it, but the way I did it here was I created kind of a gum out of the wafer paper and used it to kind of paint the wafer paper and then stick it on. And it did stick, but a lot of them popped off while I was putting them together. So, but yeah, this was an, a major experiment that I did. And there were, uh, probably about a thousand leaves on this thing. It took me months, months to get this accomplished. So I definitely, the way that Kara does it is <laughs> a lot faster, a whole lot faster. And she's absolutely right. It takes way more than five minutes. So yeah, definitely. Okay. So I, I just had to share that example when Kara was saying that I just, yes, you're absolutely right. It takes four freaking ever. I so. won't lead you astray, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, someone's asking, are you going to show us how to make a pumpkin today? Yes, I am. We better hurry and get to that. <laughs> you want to start now? Yeah, yeah, let's do. We've Fabulous. This is super quick, guys. So I can bring it down again. Now I'm starting with a 50-50 mixture of modeling chocolate and fondant. So this is homemade modeling chocolate and I think I have satin ice here right now. So I'm literally just making a ball to start with. It's just a round ball. Now I want to do one of the little flatter pumpkins. I love those flatter ones. They look kind of like cheese wheels that kind of really come out. So I'm going to make sure this is nice and round. And then I'm just going to kind of press it down just a little bit. Now I'm gonna set it down here. You know what, hang on one second, one second. Sorry guys. I forgot my cornstarch poof. Little cornstarch so things don't yeah. stick. Yeah. Also cornstarching my ball tool. This is that gigantic ball tool from New York Cake that uh, has Colette Peter's name on it. I love, this is my favorite ball tool. Mm. So I okay. make an impression in the top. And I'm completely okay with flattening the bottom a little bit. And now I'm going to take, this is a knitting needle that I've cut in half at the edge. I don't know what gauge it is. Please don't ask. I'm, I'm not, I'm a knitter, but not that good. It took me two years to do one project. So I'm not even close to kidding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to roll this upwards around the pumpkin. And now I've got a really beautiful butt. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, and, but what I like to do is I like to work in opposites. I work on opposite sides. Some people like to be really methodical about making it, it even or all the way around in equal segments. This is the best way to do it is just keep working opposite yourself. I just do those um, to get myself started. And I like a little bit of irregularity in these, like some thicker ones, some thinner ones. But no matter how I'm doing this, I'm starting in the center of the bottom and rolling upwards towards the center. I'm also trying not to handle this too much because it has modeling chocolate in it. It's a, going to melt in my hand if I fuss too much with it. So now I've got all my lines. Um, those are just kind of my starting lines. I might go back in and redefine these just a little bit more coming in towards the top. 
but I do definitely want all my lines to come into the center. As you work, you're going to naturally kind of push some of them out with your thumb. Not a big deal. Just go in afterwards. Stop touching it. Don't melt it. And do that. And so now this is what we have. See those beautiful little lines? Aren't they cute? They're so cute. Uh, you can leave it just white. They have those little white pumpkins. So cute. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that's why I wanted to do that with these leaves. I wanted to like dust it ivory and make it match these leaves with just a little bit of like warm copper accent. Um, so cool. Now I would normally take this and pop it in the fridge just for a couple seconds um, to firm it up a little. But since we're working on a, on a time schedule, pretend I did that. Okay. <laughs> we'll pretend. Yeah. So now I am going to use, this is one of those products from Alan Tetrell at um, Global Sugar Art. This is an actual edible luster dust. It is an edible hybrid luster dust, FDA approved. I love these. I, this is what I use in my Craftsy class for my shimmer tears, and that's what's on my cake behind me. Um, so I'm going to use this to get that nice kind of um, steampunky shine. I'm using a very kind of fluffy and soft brush so that I don't create streaks on here. And I'm really going in and applying a lot in just an up and down fashion over each, over each segment. I don't like doing them all the same because I like the pumpkin to have a little bit of character and be a little bit less regular. Awesome. Someone's asking, uh, will it get sticky if you put it in the fridge? I'm not nope. sure if you're asking about wafer paper or about the... No, about the modeling chocolate. No, I totally understand that. Um, you know what? I really, I don't have a problem with that. You may, depending on your fridge and your climate. Um, I don't really have a problem with that. I don't leave it in very long, though. Just enough to firm it up, not enough to create so much hold inside that it takes forever to come up to room temp. Um, but you need to know your equipment. That's that's important. Awesome. And if you work over parchment like this, guys, you can you can crease this parchment when you're done, and just funnel all your excess right back into here. Um, that's why I don't use paper towels or anything like that because it's not as easy to catch, collect, and reuse all of your excess. So okay, so now I'm going to get some of that excess out of these little crevasses. Yep, I said crevasse. <laughs> It's one of my favorite words. Here, I'm just going to move over a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with some petal dust, and this is a brick petal dust. It's similar in color, but, oh, you know what? I forgot my, forgot my better, uh, hang on, I'm coming back. <laughs> no worries. Um, I forgot a second brush. Um, I could reuse that brush, but the, the poof on it is too thick. So this one is, I don't know if you guys can see that. That one's thinner, and it'll fit between my little slots. Sl now they're slots. They're yeah. not crosses, and they're no longer bums either. Um, so now I'm going to take this, and I, I always start with the deepest, the most loaded brush at the bottom, because that's where you're going to have the most shadows naturally when you look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working away from myself, so if I'm screwing up, forgive me. It's looking great. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Once I get the color in there, I go over it a couple times um, towards the outside just to soften it a little because I don't want it to look like I painted stripes in there. I want it to just look like depth and shadow. And when you look at pumpkins like this, oftentimes if they have that dual color, oh, like, you know those really, really light ones that look a little purplish and a little greenish? They tend to have the deeper purple in between their little um, segments, which I just absolutely love. So now we go around the rest of that and continue to do that. But there you've got this cute little pumpkin. And if you really, really, really wanted to get fancy schmancy, turn it. Don't load your brush too much. But just bring it up around the edges and almost create like a little cup here. And you'll create some real, some real volume and some real shape to these. And when you set this down, no matter your light, you don't have to worry so much about creating shadows or blowing it out with light when you photograph it because it's naturally going to have this, this depth of color that's going to give you a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a rounded look. So. so that's that. Now, the only other thing that I do with these is I just take a little bit, for the ones that I did because I wanted them to still be a little bit light, I didn't use brown fondant. 
um, or modeling chocolate, I used white and I just inserted a tiny little floral wire in there and then my stem in there, just a little tube of fondant. Um, and then I just painted it with some brown gel color so that it had some streaks, it still had some white showing in there to give it texture, almost like it was pulled straight from the patch. So. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And we're going to show that picture one more time of the beautiful, uh, here, if I can pull it up again, the gorgeous. Oh, you have one right there. Okay. I plucked it off my cake just now for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a demo cake, so I don't mind. But yeah, so that's the stem. Those are the stems. So yeah, I mean, I literally, I just, I, I wanted them to look, because you know when you get it from the pumpkin patch, that top is a little rough and a little kind of scraggly, and it's always lighter. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, we have to cover a few things really fast because we're putting out a ton, but um, yeah. we had some people asking about the, the cameo thing. Um, that they weren't understanding that this is what the cutter that you use. So um, here's a picture of the Cameo right here. It's you. an electronic cutter. Um, think of the Cricut. Everybody knows the Cricut. Everybody's probably made fun of the Cricut at some point in time. I don't know Cricut, so I can't make fun of it. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how it works, but it's a similar concept where you input an image into your computer. This is connected to your computer. This you, um, you don't use cartridge. I think they might have cartridges, but I, I, you don't use cartridges. Um, and then you feed your um, your wafer paper in on that guide mat, and it does all the cutting for you. Really intricate cutting, really fast. So, yeah, there were definitely some issues with the Cricut. Um, <laughs> we won't get into that, but the no. cameo, like you said, is very similar. Um, does about the same thing, but it doesn't. Uh, you don't have to use the cartridges, which is really no. nice. It's highly customizable too. I mean, you can cut anything you want so easily. And it also does have a printing function. So you could have it print on an icing sheet or on a wafer sheet and then immediately go in and cut out around it. So if you had a fun little monkey, you know, holding say a cupcake and some balloons that you wanted to put on the side of a cake, you could print that and have it cut out exactly around that perfectly as well. I haven't used the printing function. Debbie keeps telling me to do it and I want to print everything and that's kind of why I don't because I will print everything. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So um, we have, we are just, I wish we could just spend another hour here. It's so fun. <laughs> and you've got so much great information. Tons of comments of people saying, oh, I love this information. So, so always great information from Kara. So we have one more question that I wanted to really make sure that we got asked, and that is how do you attach the leaves to your cake? Well, I used a couple different methods. I, I did use some water and I made little bunches and I let them rest just a little bit. I also used those pumpkins to set on top. I used a, um, a wooden skewer, a bamboo skewer, and I inserted it into my bunch of leaves. And then I held my leaves down while I put my pumpkin on top. It secures your pumpkin and it secures your leaves on there as well. And also, if, if you're really good at hiding things and making beautiful bouquets and full bunches, you can use a little bit of matching fondant to prop some of them up and then build up behind them again to hide that fondant. But that helps keep them from laying down flat and then they'll sit upright and you're still just using some edible materials. So awesome. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so um, we are going to be picking our winner here in just a minute. And I, gosh, I'm going to have such a hard time doing this because there are so many comments. I don't think we've had this many comments since we started Cake Foo. <laughs> so <laughs> good <Awesome>. job, Kara. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, <laughs> so many comments. So what we're going to do, um, I'm going to have you pick. Uh, the number one or two, first of all. Two. Two? Okay. Two. All right. So, and then I'm going to have you pick a number, uh, let's say one through 50. 47. 47, you're going to make me count. <laughs> uh, sorry, you have to count? Yes. Well, you, you told me I could go up to 50. No, that's okay. While I'm counting, um, I guess you guys make sure that you take advantage of the, the Craftsy class. 
Um, it will be one winner today, which is wonderful, but 50% um, off is, I mean, that's like winning too. So um, if you don't win the giveaway, be a winner. <laughs> Go get the Karasi class. Um, it's, uh, again, cakefood.com forward slash Kara dash Craftsy. And then um, I'll pull up the wafer paper one again, uh, www.icingimages.com forward slash wafer dash paper. And for those of you interested in the cameo as well, because I saw a lot of, oh my gosh, it prints too. I need one. <laughs> uh, if you um, are super interested in the, the cameo, you can purchase that there also. Um, we, we love icing images. They are absolutely wonderful. Um, so, and, and no, we're not getting a commission off of this. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so don't worry about it. It's just out of the goodness of our hearts and the, how much we absolutely love, absolutely love icing images. While you're so, having, can I talk about design, bake, decorate success? Please do. Oh, let me pull up that image really fast awesome. for you. <laughs> Oh, so many comments. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to pull this up for you. If so if you guys are a subscriber to my email newsletter, new or old, um, I have recently released a free ebook only for my email subscribers. Um, and you may have noticed a little logo on the bottom that Amelia is going to pull up. Um, it's There it is. Or here it comes. There it is. Design, make, decorate, success. This is kind of where I'm taking Kara's Couture Cakes. We're moving a little bit more into mentorship um, and not just teaching. I'm not just talking about tutorials on the blog. I'm talking about some deeper understanding of cakes for new cake decorators and early intermediates. Everybody could benefit from this stuff. Um, but anywhere you see this logo from me, and this is my logo, <laughs> um, I just had it designed. and It was such a fun process. Um, Anywhere you see this, you know that you're getting a little bit of a deeper mentorship from me. So I started off with a free ebook on how I organized myself to help my career take off because I just wasn't doing in cake what I wanted to and I was starting to hate it. Truly, I was starting to hate cake at the end of 2013. Um, so get this ebook, it's free. Um, tells you about my five step plan that I used or five point plan maybe. Um, and it gives you a free template to start setting yourself up um, to take your cake career where you want to go in your direction. Um, so look out for this logo and for the great things that come along with it from Kara's Couture Cakes. All right, we are just about there. And if you if you haven't gotten the ebook if, or if you're not on my subscriber list yet, go to my website www.karascouturecakes.com. And within a few seconds, a little pop-up will hit the screen and it'll tell you um, that you can subscribe to the email there and get your free ebook. You have to follow the download links. Um, you have to confirm in your email just so that, you know, I make sure I'm not sending it to anyone who truly didn't want it or if it was a mistake. Um, <laughs> and then when it takes you to the Dropbox to access the file, don't preview it because it'll look Greek. I've had enough people tell me this. You have to actually download it to your device and then it'll read perfectly. So. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we have a winner yeah. chosen. So, um, all right, so our winner is Deborah Hanscombe. Deborah Hanscombe, that name sounds familiar to me. Deborah, do I know you from one of the forums on Facebook? I'm not sure. If you are, then. Um, let us know in the chat in the comment section. We'd love to hear where, where we know you from. Yes. Um, and I'm typing a message to you on the free crafty class. And hey, congratulations. That is very exciting. Congratulations, Deborah. Hey, Deborah, I'll see you on my class. Yay. Awesome. Well, yeah, th this is, oh my gosh, overload of information. You guys need to come back and watch this again like five times. <laughs> and someone asked, will the comments still be there? Um, the, I know that the comments that are down below in the comment section will always be there. Um, the, the chat box, I'm not 100% certain. I know it stays up for a week or two, so um, go through and, and check those out. Um, again, I forgot to mention the coupon code for the icing images wafer paper is Kara, K-A-R-A. -A. So 
So make sure that you um, simple uh, use that coupon code so that you get your 10% off. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Did we cover everything? Is there something I forgot? I don't think so. Not on my end. I think we're good. I mean, okay. I can listen to myself talk all day, but. <laughs> uh, well, you have such good information, you know? <laughs> awesome. So uh, Deborah commented, said, yay, I won. So excited. Um, so, so I don't know where she where she knows you're from. But okay, um, we will get that uh, free Crafty class to you, Deborah. Congratulations. Everybody else, again, make sure you go over to um, cakefood.com forward slash Kara slash or dash Crafty. And um, that is the, the discount link right there. I will put that up again in the chat box for all of you guys because I know that someone just barely asked for it again. So <laughs> I'll post it there too. Um, and I, I think we're, we are so good for the day, you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Kara, for coming. Uh, no we always love when you I have fun doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should just have you as a regular on this show. <laughs> no, we could have like Kara's chat corner. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh, just like, okay, so if you guys don't do Periscope, this is my, my last little insert here. Um, Periscope, Kara does a bedtime stories, uh, a cakey bedtime stories. It is so much. Bedtime stories. Foodie What's bedtime that? stories. Foodie. Yeah. Foodie. Yeah. Food science. It's basically, yeah. it's, it's to teach you guys the whys, the hows, and the how comes. So it's very. Wow. It, is, it is awesome stuff. Great stuff. All right. Well, thank you again, guys, for, for coming and joining us. Thank you for all the wonderful comments. And thank you again, Sarah. Oh, sorry. My little guy. His, his movie just got over. So good. <laughs> all right. Thank you. You got to watch Big Hero 6. Okay. <laughs> all right. Can you tell everybody goodbye? Bye. 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 Bye, guys. <laughs>